Hi Floss Tube friends, I'm Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher here on YouTube, also on Instagram, and I have a cross stitch store, coloradocrossstitcher.com. I am back today, I'm happy to be back. I came back from market with a cold, so I might have to like stop for a second, cough, Paul will, you know, put those together seamlessly so you don't have to listen to me cough, but that's why it took me an extra week to get back to you. Last weekend I had laryngitis, so. All right, I have so much to show you guys today. So I have finishes, I have progress, I have um, some interesting ways to finish things, which some of them I've shown you before and some of them I haven't. So we're gonna talk about some just unique ways to finish things. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you how I glue on trim because that is one of the questions I get the most in the comments is how do you put your trim on and I always just glue it on and a couple people have said can you demo that so I'm going to show you that so lots to do let's just jump right in so first of all my calendar for February <clears throat> now over here I usually put all my new starts and so here I had a full month of new starts here gotta take that down I just had like one yeah, one. So I filled that in. And then March, got to start on March already. And um, I, th I feel like this is my third year really filling out the calendar, like doing the extra stuff that I like to do. And so I feel like every year I get kind of more comfortable with what is important, what is important for me to keep track of and what I want to do. So on my whips page, I added the fabric information because a lot of those whips were started you know two or three years ago and that information is in a different calendar so I wanted to show you that and then I also talked I think in my first floss tube of the year about how I took my whip list and then sorted them into different quarters so that I could at least have a place where I was going to work on them I feel like once I once you put it down and you have a plan, it makes it feel like you're on top of it. Maybe not on top of it, but beside it. So I have stitched on that many of first quarter, so I have four more to go. So I have Francis Eden, which I actually started working on yesterday. Um, His Eyes on the Sparrow, Martha Evans, and Happy Christmas, which I can show you those real quick where I'm at so the next time I show you I hope to work on them still in March these are not ironed <clears throat> so Martha Evans this is where I'm at on Martha Evans a lot left to do on that but again I feel like at least I've got a plan if I've got it written down and <clears throat> I'm trying really hard to stay on top of that so I can make all the little check marks so I feel like I'm accomplishing something his eyes on the sparrow here. A lot left on that too. But again, got a plan. And then the last one <clears throat> is Happy Christmas, which I just started this fall. And I don't really have that much left to. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. This. Yeah, I do. I still have a lot to do. <laughs> but I really want it framed for this coming Christmas, December. So that means I have to get it done in time to get it framed. So those are the three things I still have on my list to um, take care of. Plus Francis Eden, which then I'll check them all off. And then probably next month I'll show you what my spring whip plan is is so I can stay on top of that all right let's look at some of the things I did this month so first of all I wanted to show you this cute little um, pillow this is a pattern I did for the Nashville market cookbook where you can get the cookbook and there's a lot of free patterns in there and I think there's like 40 some patterns and 90 some recipes I mean it's $12 it's such a great deal so I did this on 40 count because um, I wanted to make it a tiny little pillow, obviously, 
stitch it bigger if you want to. But it says on there, um, when flowers bloom, so does hope. And that was an Eleanor Roosevelt quote. So that is a free pattern in the Nashville cookbook. And if you open up the cover, it's right there on the first page. That was fun to do. I don't remember how long ago I did that because you have to turn it in, you know, pretty early on. All right, Spring Quaker from Primrose Cottage. So, of course, I had to do my color, do it in color, and I didn't ever intend to do all of these in color. I just did the autumn one, and then I kind of got started on a roll. So this is the one that I have not put any trim on yet, but I'm going to put this purple trim on, and I'm going to show you how I do that when I get to that part of the video. So here is my color version. Let's see if I can hold it. Color version of Spring Quaker, which was really fun to work on. All of these Quakers that they do are so creative and so cute. I do mine on 40 count, so they turn out pretty small, which I like. Um, I think they call for 32 in the pattern. 28. So yours is going to be a lot bigger if you do it on the called for. But anyway, these are, and I'll tell you the colors I used in just a second. So I used Classic Color Works Morning Glory and Queen Bee. And then I used Weeks Dye Works Loden, uh, Lilac and Hunter. So I will put that on my Instagram along with the color threads which I've done for the other ones too. So if you're looking for that, um, check my Instagram. And then I did my February Prairie Schooler. I'm trying to do one each month. And I did it for February Cross Stitch Camp. And the Cross Stitch Camp challenge was to stitch something with an animal. So I did it with cardinals. And I was really going to change one of those cardinals to the female cardinal. That's one of my pet peeves on cardinal um, patterns so often because the male cardinals are bright red. But I know I've told you this before. We had a cardinal, a pair of cardinals that lived outside our house in St. Louis in the bushes right outside our, our family room. And oh, we just loved having them there. And so I have a, bear, a big fondness for the female cardinals too, which are not quite as colorful but I was under the gun stitching this so I made them both red and then here's the one that I've already shown you for the for January and I think for March which I got to get on it maybe I'm going to stitch the new the new one which I'll show you when we get to the last few minutes of um, shop news but the new one this year is really unique and I'm really excited to do it. So I think that's going to be my March one. And I keep uh, all of my, all of these in this bag. And it's really great to have one bag um, just with all of the threads. So I'm using all the same threads. I did swap out, let's see, the red. So I'm using 498 red instead of, I think it calls for 221. And then I switched out the face hand color. And I'm using, let's see, 945. Is that this one? Yeah, 945 for the face. So those are the only two differences that I've done so far. But you know, most of these use the same colors or a lot of the same colors, for sure the same white, green, and red. So I keep all this together and I even have I have a little hoop in here that I use. I have pre-cut, look at all my pre-cuts. This is 40 Count Weeks Dye Works Cocoa, and I've pre-cut all of them so that when I get to the month and I'm ready to stitch it, I just pull it out, and I've got all my little um, collection of cards, you know, Prairie Schooler cards in here. So it is a one and go kind of a bag. Because I feel like if I have everything ready, I don't have any excuse to not just pick it up and jump right in. So I'm happy to have those done. And I know, um, Carol, Caroling55, Caroling, oh, I should have written that down. And she's the one who has the most incredible Christmas tree. 
anyway, she says, finish them as you go. I can totally understand how that is a smart thing to do, but I feel like I want to finish them all kind of the same. And so maybe I'll finish like three or four at a time and then move on. So that was my ornament. And then I kind of hinted to you in one of my newsletters that I have started a sampler. I started it for my birthday, which was in February. And I've started this sampler and I cannot stop working on it. I did finally put it away, but only because I had to have something to show you guys besides the one thing. So first of all, I have this beautiful project bag that my friend Sandy made for me for my birthday, which I love because that is the sampler that I can't stop working on. Sarah Milthorpe by Hands Across the Sea. And one of the things I love, of course, is that bright red house, but I also love those trees. I think those are fun. I really like the fruit baskets. I don't always like fruit baskets. I love the border, which is very similar to a, a, one of my whips borders, and I meant to pull that out to show you. But um, And so when I was pulling the colors, I thought, well, it's MPIs, and I thought, well, if I don't like the red, I'll swap. I, Get a different color red and I liked all of the colors except one and I'll show you when that one went which one that is but here are the colors and as I'm stitching and I'm thinking you know I really love working on bright colored patterns like I, I was I don't know why that was a all of a sudden a duh moment but you know, sometimes I, and we've talked about this when I've talked about color before, which I did in my last um, video again about warm and cool colors. Sometimes when I'm stitching warm colors, I get bored stitching them because I really love cool colors, but I also really love bright colors. So sometimes when I'm stitching things that are very muted, very um, soft, I mean, they're beautiful colors, but I just, I get bored working on it sometimes. Anyway, so now I'm going to look for, so here's a question for you. Now I'm going to look for more samplers, more patterns with bright colors because I really am having so much fun with that. So let's do just samplers. If you, do you have a sampler that is done in beautiful bright colors that you love? Now Martha Evans that is in my pile to work on this month is also one of those really pretty bright colored samplers and that's a Scarlet House pattern. So anyway, all that to say, here's where I am on Sarah Milthorpe. I'm kind of saving that red house to do last because that's kind of like the reward. And I did the one over one at the top. The cartouche down there also gets one over one. And you know how I'm doing samplers for, I'm replacing the names on the samplers with a different relatives of mine, but I think I'm gonna put my name on this one because I, it's probably my favorite ever sampler that I've done so far. There's another one coming out this summer that I can't tell you about yet, but that's gonna run a close second to this. Maybe even overtake it, but I will definitely be doing that one too, but anyway, I, I just love the colors on this. I love her sense of color. Oh, the only other thing that I changed out is, let me show you. So on the pattern, do you see that orange? Like it's in this, this tree right here, that bright orange. And when I pulled all the colors, that was just one of those that were too jumpy outy at me. It, it was too much. And this is the color that is called for, let's see, 2643, and I subbed in 2932. So I just took it down a little bit and made it a little, is that what I subbed for? Yeah. Made it a little um, more of a pink orange than an orange orange, but it still comes out. Pretty darn orange. Hang on, you guys. Maybe I said that wrong. Maybe I completely took out the green, the orange one. I think that's what I did. I think I took the orange one out, called for. I'll tell you what's called for. And this is the orange I'm doing, which is, believe it or not, a little more subtle. So that one 
is yeah that one oh it's Swa Delge it's not MPI so that one the call for is 912 and I swapped it for 2643 well I should have had 912 here so you could see how much brighter even that one was so I went through all the Aversois and this is the one that I picked out and that makes more sense because you can see that in that tree It's still very poppity, and I think that the sampler needed that pop. I just didn't want it to be quite so poppy. I'm going to have to next time pull the other color so I can show you the difference between those two. But the red, I mean, I love the red that it's called for. I love all the other colors. So that is the only one that I swapped out on this whole thing, and I cannot wait to get back to it. Okay, then the next thing I do every month is the Year of Silhouettes, and this one is so fun because I'm adding a little bit of color each month. So I'm doing one um, square a month, and then this month I did this square, but I also finished off this. I had about half of this done, so I finished that off. So I guess I'll do six more months of just squares and then I'll have this one to do also. But it's all done in black, but I'm adding a pop of color. And I think it would be really fun to go through and add color like all over this. But with this, I'm just trying to not go nuts about it. And so I'm really trying to not cough is what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> I'm going to drink water. Um, I'm really trying to just add one or two colors one or two things and so here's what i did for march so i colored her hat her boots and the kite i was tempted to do the hats of those two little kids that are running behind her and then i thought no i think that would be adding a little too much i really just want to keep it a couple of pops of color and then on the ABC's down at the bottom I did the house with a red roof and green windows and I'm doing this on 25 count um, silver moon one over one I forgot to tell you what Sarah Milthorpe is oh it's on 40 count it's a color and cotton fabric and it just said limited. It was one that I picked up when I was shopping in their store and it didn't really have a, a specific color. So that was that one. It reminds me of like Linen by Weeks or um, what's that other one that I love so much? By Fiber on a Whim. Some other white color. Anyway, it's a beautiful color. So this is Silver Moon Lugano 1 over 1 and it's going to be a tiny little piece but packed with stitches which is one of the things I love about stitching on small counts is it just is such a tiny little piece of art when you're done it's been super fun to work on and she has a bunch of um, different patterns like this which are one color some of them are one color plus an accent which is where I got the idea from her um, so look up Joan Elliott on our website. We just restocked all of her patterns, so we've got a good selection of them. And then the next one I worked on is one of my whips. This is the one I'm making for my dad, and um, it's a big one. And I love working on it. I do love working on it. It's a little sad because he passed away a year and a half ago, but I'm trying to focus on all of the good things when I work on it and I know that I will love it when I get it done so this is the pattern family patchwork by modern folk this was their yearly stitch along in 2020 I didn't do it obviously is that so I um, I worked on like all that there are a lot of places in here where you can personalize so I worked on all the things I want to add in you know that kind of represent my dad but look at all the initials in there this would be a fun one to do if you wanted to put 
all the initials of one side of your family or if you've got a lot of kids and grandkids and their spouses you know this would be a good one to add all of that in so there's just a lot of extra space which for me is going to be fun to personalize to my dad some of the you know things he loved to do and things that were important to him and so anyway let's get on to this part let's see if i can hold it up on here So I most, basically what I worked on was this and this here. And I wanted, I was hoping to get these two things done and then I thought well, it's time to start working on something else. Um, so I put this away, but now that I've made a plan for how I want to personalize it, I'm really um, looking forward to getting some of that stuff in and done because that's just gonna make it so unique, I think. Now, the last time I looked at this distributor, they did not have this. So do, does, do you know if he, if Jacob stopped selling his year stitch alongs after so many years, or maybe they were just out, except I think they print them on demand. So I was just curious if I'm gonna ever be able to get more copies of this, or if once it's gone, it's gone, in which case I need to buy some of the subsequent years because there are other ones I want to do. Okay, and that one is on 40 count platinum. So it's not a hand dyed, it's just a regular platinum, which is one of my favorite colors. And I'm using MPI silks on that. You know what else I thought? Okay, because I was thinking about this too, if I was gonna stitch it again, which I will not. But this is another one that would be really, um, fun to put colors in because look you've got hearts in there that would be fun you've got trees and houses and animals and that would be really fun to experiment with i've got another one of his um, and i picked out four colors of silk to use in it and it's a i think it's a two color one of his two colors it might be 2021 or 2022 and it calls for two colors and I've seen beautiful renditions of it in two colors, but I picked out four colors to work on, but I have to do this one first. Once I get that one done, then I'll think about doing the next one and I'll share all that with you when I get to that. Okay, then let's talk a little bit about um, using scrapbooking tools for some of the things that you do, some of your finishing. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So first of all, is this little circle punch. This is from Creative Memories. Oh, I know that was loud, sorry. But I was working on my calendar, which I try and do about once a month, and I had two, let's see where did I put those, two little photos that I wanted to print. Oh, now I can only find one. Oh. And, uh, but I wanted, didn't want them to take up too much space. So one was this cup of coffee and it was a snow day. We were getting like eight inches of snow on that particular day. So I printed it out on my little printer. I brought my little printer to show you too. And then I used this to cut it out. And it's almost like making a, um, you know, any size sticker that you want to make, but it's a photo. <coughs> and you can find photos online of pretty much anything you want to print out and then add them to your calendars or what have you. So if you have punches like this, these are fun to use. And the next thing I used this time in one of my finishing was these templates from my scrapbooking stash. And this is how I used them. I had this particular piece that I finished quite a while ago and I'd never finished, fully finished it. And it had a, uh, rounded top like this. I did, it's a scattered seed sampler um, and I didn't even pull the pattern out. I think it's called um, set free perhaps. Uh, I didn't pull the pattern out to see if it had a template because I had it down in my sewing room when I was doing my finishing day and I thought well I think I can figure out how to do an arch and so what I did was I took my uh, circle, circle cutting circle, the biggest circle, and on the back of my finished piece, 
I laid that down, I put the circle on top, and I centered it exactly where I wanted it to be so that I could then trace the top. And I traced just to about here on the back, and then I just used a ruler and went straight down. You can also do that with your ovals. That was a little um, narrower than I wanted it to be, but I did use the oval on the bottom. That was a little trickier. So I cut this out in the shape I wanted. I um, finished it. I sewed it left the bottom open and then tried to measure with the different sizes of ovals what size would I need to make sure that it goes all the way around and it was the right size and I ended up cutting it and then thinking it was the perfect size and then tried to put it in and it was not the right size so I had to do a little bit of fudging with that but if you have scrapbooking tools and I know a lot of you were former scrapbookers like I was um, they really are helpful in doing some of your finishing work. So then with this, I just tied a little bow on the top and had a little key that somebody gave me. And then I um, sewed on this leather, fake leather uh, trim around the edges because I couldn't find a good chenille or baker's twine, which I love using, or ribbon that I really thought matched well. Well, this was okay but not for all the way around. It wasn't the right color. So anyways, I sewed that on. That's how I did that one. Okay, <clears throat> backtrack because here it is right in front of me. The little printer, and I always um, link to this in my show notes because people ask a lot, the little printer that I use to print out all of those little pictures that I put in my calendar is a Kodak printer and it holds, um, 10, 10 prints. You can get a box of 50 prints and they each come 10 to a pack like this. It tells you exactly how to put it in your printer. And then when you turn the printer on, it tries to connect to something. So it can connect to your phone or it can connect to your um, computer. And it asks if you want to pick some more pictures to print and you just go to your photos on your phone and you dot 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 whatever ones you want and say yes you all share those and then you print them right up so it's really a cool little device um, i've been using one for like five years this is my second one and the first one they don't make anymore but and then you can get a little carrying case for it and so that is the little printer I use and I also use it to print out um, little photos for my fridge just because I can print them fast so I love this little thing. All right um, next let's see I have some framed pieces to show you and then I'm going to go into showing you how I want to talk a little bit about uh, lizard litter and how I stuffed the pillows and put the twine on and then I bought brought a lot of examples of different ways to finish things besides just making a pillow. And then my good friend Cheryl lent me three of her pieces, which is a, a new kind of finishing. I'm sure some of you have done it, but it is so cool. So I want to show you that. So here are some ones that I just got framed. So this is Be Thankful. And um, this is one that I did, I think, I mean, I must have done it right away when it came out. It's a cross-eyed cricket piece. But the funny thing is, you know, I remember seeing this like a year ago, not this, but seeing the pattern and thinking, oh, that's so cool. I need to get that and stitch it. And then I came across it in my cross stitch things. I'd already stitched it, just had never framed it. So this was framed by Sydney who comes on Saturdays to our shop and does the framing. She does a beautiful job. So that one's fun. And these are ones that, like, I don't have the patterns in the shop, so I get to actually hang this in my house. I don't have a lot of those because most of them go right to the shop. Here's another one that was uh, framed by Sydney, and this is um, Sampler Roll by Samplers Remembered. I got this at the attic. And it is on the cover of it, it is made into a sampler roll, which is just as cute as can be. I didn't know where I would put that necessarily, and plus I just loved the row of houses like they were. So I made mine into a framed piece. 
And I do like the soft colors in this one. You know how I was telling you, not so much, but I really do like the way this one turned out. <clears throat> For some reason, it was really fun to stitch, and I love all the colors of the grass down there below. And then this one goes to the shop. This one I just started in December and finished, Repeat the Sounding Joy by Plum Street. Not my colors. These are very warm colors, but you wouldn't change a thing in there. The evergreens are a little cool, so that's kind of the cool pop in this whole piece, but everything else, these greens and the pomegranates and the flowers and everything else, it's really a warm, a warm grouping, and I just think it's beautiful. I love it. It's always fun to get framed things back. I know that it's pricey to get things framed. And I didn't, I think when I got back into cross stitching in 2017, I think it was, after having like a 15 or 20 year break from it, um, I hadn't had, I hadn't had things framed because I started running out of wall space in our house. And that's one of the reasons I stopped cross stitching because I thought, I, I don't have anywhere to put anything else. And when I got back into it, I slowly started to get things framed and I realized how much I love having framed pieces on the wall. You know, I always thought I was a process stitcher where I get most of my joy out of the actual stitching of the piece. And then when I started getting them framed or finished in all these different ways, I just thought, you know, I think I get equal amounts of joy out of it with seeing the finished piece too on display. It's just so fun to have them up in the house or up in the shop or up on shelves. You know, a lot of these littles that you can do or changing out adobo for the season. It's just kind of fun to have something like that. So I've changed my mind on process versus product stitcher. I think I'm a little bit of both in cross stitching. All right, I wanna show you these beautiful pieces that my friend Cheryl did. Um, Cheryl has a quilting business called Hedgehog Quilting. I'm going to link to her below on Instagram. So go on Insta. She is an incredible quilter. I am so lucky to have her as my quilter whenever I do do quilts because I feel so good giving them to her and knowing she's going to do a beautiful job. But so the thing about Cheryl is I um, when I started my not when I started I had my yarn business the Loop U for. 16 years and about I don't know how many years in 10 years in no not that much eight years in we decided to add fabric to the crust or to the store to the yarn shop and um, we had a great fabric shop and Cheryl told me well that's all good but I'm not gonna learn how to quilt I'm a knitter and I don't want to learn how to quilt well that didn't last very long she took a class she loved it she loved it so much she decided to get a long arm quilter quilt machine and start a business so when i started the cross stitch thing she's like well that's all good but i'm not going to learn how to cross stitch because i've got enough going on well remember when i did um that challenge with you guys each one teach one where i said you know we really need to be spreading cross stitching you know to younger people to um, our friends to whoever we need to help grow the community and so I challenged everybody in that particular floss tube to teach one friend or find one person you can teach cross stitching to so I said to Cheryl I know you don't want to cross stitch can you just let me teach you because I have to teach somebody and I have to be able to say I taught somebody and so this first one is the um, project she picked and I didn't want to tell her you know that's a pretty uh, pretty big project for a first project because she loved it and then she picked 25 count Lugana to stitch over one and I said you know that's like small you, you might like starting on something a little bigger no she wanted to do that and of course it turned out beautiful so on these for these three pieces I'm going to show you what she did is finished them into mini quilts and then quilted them and they turned out so cute. So the first two are two of the bees from the blue flower. Look how fun that is. Well, I love the fabrics she picked, which of course are perfect, but also 
Look at how she quilted around the B to make it pop. She quilted around the borders to kind of make that pop forward. I think it turned out so cute. So that was her very first cross stitch project. And I knew that I'd hit pay dirt when she decided to do a second project. Because you know when you like you love something so much, you love a hobby, and you just want to share it with your very favorite friends, and that's how I felt about this. I just so wanted her to do this. I, I wasn't going to coerce her. I wasn't going to try and talk her into it, but I wanted her to at least try it. Man, she loves it. All right, here's the next one. Another bee from Blue Flower. And on this one, she quilted around the border and around the uh, center B, which you can see on the back where her quilting is. I'll show you the back of this one too. It just looks so fun how it pops forward, doesn't it? And then the fun thing about using fabric is you can pick, you know, like really fun. I, I love that she um, used these batik fabrics because that's just so perfect for these two guys. And then this one I know is a pattern she got online and I don't know who it is, but it is really a cool pattern and a cool finish. I'll try and find out for her and add that to the notes below. So on this one, you can see her quilting lines, which she did on the borders and also to separate all the squares. Isn't that a fun way to finish some of our pieces? The thing I like about mini quilts is, you know, you can take like just a little um, sewing pin. What are those called? You know, the pins that you have the knob on the end and you pin your pattern. Just a sewing pin. Sewing pins. Yeah. You can um, put those in the corners and tack it up on your wall and nobody can see that and it leaves like the most minuscule hole that you'll never have to, you know, fill or repair in your house. So these are super easy to hang if you do them as mini quilts, and I know a lot of you are quilters out there. So, so that is one way to, um, different, to finish some of your projects. All right, let's go back to um, pillows. So I brought my lizard litter up. This is 10 pounds, so I ordered the 10 pound bag of lizard litter. It's what I stuff all of my pillows with. Um, I like it because it, I feel like there's something on me. Nope, it's just a reflection. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, um, I feel like it gives a little heft to, a little weight to the pillow, which I like. Now, if it's a big pillow, then I do, sometimes I do half and half, half fiber fill, and then maybe the bottom lizard litter to give it a little more weight on the bottom. Um, but generally, I try and do mostly lizard litter because I like the weight. So um, I keep it all in here. I have a funnel. You'll need a funnel because what I do is I sew all the way around and this one. But for some reason, I had my opening at the top. I screwed that up. It doesn't matter, but I just usually leave the opening at the bottom. But here's the little opening that I left. So I sew right sides together, sew all the way around, not all the way around. Sew and leave about mm, an inch and a half, an inch space. Clip it, clip the seams, clip the corners. Um, I highly recommend that you watch Vana the Twisted Stitcher uh, video on doing pillows because that's how I knew how to do my corners the best that I could do them. I think in there she recommends going all the way around and then making a cut in the back, turning it right side out, filling it, and then putting a, like a patch or a uh, whatever over the top of the back. I tried that for several of mine, and I just cut out like a little heart out of um, felt, wool felt, and then did a buttonhole stitch down. Looks really cute, but I could never get it as full as I can get it when I leave an opening. 
And since I always put some kind of, mm, okay, not always, 95% of the time I put some kind of trim around that kind of hides that little seam, even though I stitch it very carefully, um, I just feel like I can get it fuller. So here is my, I thought I had my stick in here. Yeah. So here is my tip. These, these tips came from Vana, but you still need to watch her video because you got to see how she does corners. So I stuff it. So you turn it right side out and you put your funnel in. And then I have this little, I don't know why this, it was just in my sewing room, but this is what I used to scoop into the funnel and then get it into um, the pillow and as I'm doing it so when it's about half full then I take this stick this is just a stick that came in the fiber fill bag but you can use a chopstick or you can use a, a pen you know without the pen part um, but what I do is then I just stuff it in here and I chop 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 like I really just like I'm stuffing down all of the lizard litter and I stir it a little and what that does is it helps your lizard litter or your filling um, compact so it helps it settle so you can get a firmer fill on your pillows. I have some pillows at work that definitely need a restuffing because they are not full at all but this way I do that fill it full do this chop 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 I always chop down the side on the inside because that helps smooth this out and make sure you get down way into the corners chop down into the corners and um, so I fill it, fill it, fill it until it's about as full as I can get it. You know, I put my finger down into the hole and push it into the top corners, fill it full. Then I stitch all but like this amount of space. And so when I've got it almost all the way done, then I take this guy and I just tap a few more bits of lizard litter in that last little spot and then I snip it up. And that's how I fill this with the big thing of lizard litter. Now, if you don't do a lot of pillows, you're never going to need a 10 pound thing of it, but I've probably gone through 50 pounds of it with as many pillows as I've done. So, and I ordered on Amazon and um, then they can bring it up to my door because it's heavy, 10 pounds. But you know, it's amazing how heavy 10 pounds can be. All right, and then I use Aileen's Tacky Glue for gluing on my trim. This is another um, Vana tip, but this is the glass jar that I keep mine in. And she says always keep it upside down like this because it's always ready to glue then in that case. Now I forgot to bring a scissor. But I'm still gonna kind of demo how I do this. And I'm just gonna, you're, well, you know what? I think I have a new scissor. And this, which I do, which I'm going to show you because it's one of the things I brought back from market. And I want one of these for my very own self, so maybe I'll just keep this one. Look, it comes with a tip. It's from the Scissorist. It comes with this cool, very cool leather. Now mine. Okay, so cut off the end. And then what I like to do is I like to just put the glue okay I gotta get the dried part off of the end I like to put the glue all the way around you have to be careful because you don't want it to um, you don't want to get your you know smush your hand along as you're gluing so I'm gonna put my glasses on just so I don't screw this up so I just start here I'm going to show you I'm going to show you that I can't get the glue to go because it's dried up. Shouldn't be. Hang on. Let's see if I can get it going. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to do a cut so I can go get a needle to kind of get this open. So, okay, I'm back. So I got a needle. I'm just going to poke that in. There we go. All right, so then I'm just going to tap this along and I'm going to show you how much glue I put on. Hope you can see that. It's just a thin line. And I glue on 
chenille, my glue on baker's twine. I really don't know how you could sew on baker's twine really subtly without letting your stitches see, letting your stitches show because it's so narrow and thin and I love that about that kind of a trim because sometimes I don't want a whole lot. I just want a little something that almost gives it a little bit of a frame. But like when I was using that little leather, braided leather on my oval dome top one, I knew that I had to sew that on. That was I probably could have glued it, but just to be on the safe side. But chenille I glue, I have glued on ribbon before. Okay, so I don't know if that's going to show, but that's all the way around, just a little bit of glue. And it dries clear, so once it's dry, any excess is not going to show. So then what I do is I just lay it on. And the reason I do it all the way around, I used to do one side at a time. I do all the way around because I just like to keep going with it. So I just set it there and I just tap. And then I usually let it set out like undisturbed overnight. It dries in a few hours, but I just feel better about giving it overnight. You have to be really careful as you're tapping that you don't get glue on your fingers like I just did because you don't want to get the glue on the front of your piece if you happen to use those fingers again. Okay, just tapping it around like this. Then I'm going to take my brand new scissors and I'm going to cut and I don't cut until I'm all the way around because I want to make sure that those match up perfectly. So that's where they're matching up. So that's how it looks. And yeah, you can see some of the glue. I kind of hold it like this to see are there any spots where I need to tap it down where I can see through. See light through there. But it's just so slick and it's so fast. That was one of the things that held me back on doing uh, pillows with trim is I just never, I never enjoyed sewing the trim on. Like I just wanna be done with it. So there you go. Now I have, now, I, now it's hard for me to hold this cause I can't hold on the sides. But now I've got that little bit of Baker's twine trim around the edges. Yeah, very cool. We sell Baker's Twine, but you can also get it at Hobby Lobby, Michael's online. There's all kinds of Baker's Twine available, and it's not expensive, and you get a whole bunch. So anytime I see a new color, I try and pick it up because I like having a whole rainbow of options. The other thing is you can take your um, Baker's Twine into your local um, needlework shop and match it exactly to different colors of thread so that after you do your project, you know that your trim is gonna exactly match what you use to stitch. That's kind of a fun option too. So anyway, that's how I do that. That's how I do the filling. And again, um, watch Vanna's tutorial because she's just the best. All right. So let me show you a few, that's the end of the demo today, but I'm gonna show you a few of the other things that, well, I gotta re-show you this scissor when I get to the shop part, but I am gonna keep this for my own self now. Um, a few other ways to finish things so you're not always making a lot of pillows. Nothing wrong with pillows, but if you've seen my red cabinet in the shop, it is full to overflowing with pillows and I definitely need to be doing some other options. So this is a pillow, but a different shaped pillow that I already shared with you. Um, this one was really fun to do. So this was Tomato Tavern by uh, Lucy Beam. And I just wanted to do mostly the tomato because I love that big, fat, floppy tomato. And then I finished it on a foam board that I then backed with 
a material board. And what I, I remember floss tubing this and saying, you know what I really want is I wish I could find some kind of a pedestal to glue this on. And after I finished floss tubing that day, I went to the antique stores and I walked in and this is the first thing I saw and I'm like, that's exactly what I wanted. So I think it's just somebody stuck, it looks like the end of a sewing machine drawer or something or a cornice or I don't know what it is. But I glued my tomato on here and then it had this bottom so then I stitched tomato tavern with tomatoes all the way around on the bottom. So if I ever see these guys, I'm always thinking ahead on, that would make a perfect, because when you stick it somewhere, it's a good height, because then you could do like a couple pillows under it or you know different displays around it, which is kind of fun. So that's one idea, taking a drink. Another question I get a lot, besides the twine question is, where did I get that white cabinet behind me? And I did get that in an antique store, and it was painted white. It, it wasn't, um, it's not like the, what is that paint called that everybody does now? You know, that really pretty paint where everybody puts it on and then sands half of it off. It wasn't done like that. It was just painted and it has flaked and chipped like that. But I see these cabinets all the time at the antique store and they're brown wood. I mean, they're plain as day. So if you're interested in one of those cabinets for you know seasonal displays, I swap mine out for the season or it's fun to put little pillows in there, Look, get a, keep a lookout for the brown ones. You're probably not gonna find a white one or a whatever color you wanna paint it one, but there are a lot of brown ones. I think it was just a little curio cabinet probably in the 60s or 70s that was popular and now nobody wants them. So find one of those and you can paint it up any color you want and sand it or don't sand it. Here's another antique store find and this is a free little pattern on our website. But I just, I think this is a sugar shaker because it's a little big for a salt shaker. And so then I just put a tomato on the top and I again, um, Paul cut a little piece of foam board for me so I could affix it there. And I specifically designed the size of this so it would fit on here. Of course, you can manipulate size of anything with your um, linen and how many stitches over you do and that kind of thing. But this was fun and I'm, I'm looking, I love looking for jars at the antique stores too because jars are cool, fun to finish on. This was, this is a Blackbird design and this I think was a kit, but I see these um, containers at Hobby Lobby. So I painted it green and that was a fun one to finish on too. I'm not really excited about my finishing technique on this, but it's finished and done. So there you have it. But they have a lot of wooden um, different pieces at, at Hobby Lobby that you can get. I know I'm going to cough again. <coughs> All right. Here's another antique find, and this is a book. This is a Teresa Kogan idea, finishing on books like this. So it's an antique. This is Cup of Cheer by With Thy Needle. What I have found is it's hard to find just the right size book. So I've gathered a lot of books in colors I love to do more finishing of books. And I just have to really pay attention to what I'm working on and the size I want to stitch it on so that it fits. I mean, this fits perfectly on here, but it's another fun, different kind of a finish. Another fun thing from the antique store, tins, and then do your finish on top. 83 cents. Okay, I'm back. Little Another little coughing spell. Made my eyes water now. But um, there are all kinds of tins at the antique store. And so this one, I don't know how I got that perfectly to fit on there because I did not pre-plan that. But then Paul cut a little um, round of <coughs> foam core for me. And then I just filled in with black chenille around there. So that's another fun thing to finish on. 
here's some different shapes of pillows. So I know you guys have all seen Block Party from um, Hands on Design. And I love her block parties and they are so fun to finish and they're so easy to finish. She's got perfect instructions in there. So you stitch the top. She includes the little piece of wool that you um, tack down with a blanket stitch or whatever. And then you stitch all around the side. The bottom is, I think her the bottom on all of hers is blank. I have seen some that have designs on the bottom and I think why do that? Nobody's going to see it. On the bottom of ours I put the different cats that our family has had in our lives because this is the cat block party meow. But it's a different way to finish a pillow and I really I've made two of them and I want to make more Another, um, two other sizes, don't always think in terms of square or rectangles. Um, you can think of long skinny pillows. This is from Sisterhood of the Needle, which is a design that I did last summer. This is also Sisterhood of the Needle, so finish it into a strawberry or a long skinny pillow, which are fun to do. Strawberries, super, super easy to do. It's literally one seam and then you do the top. Vana has a tutorial about that, which I watched. Um, another thing you can get at Hobby Lobby is these pre-done uh, frames. And then you can just cover up the top. I think all of these, they usually have them for the different seasons and they have words on them and I just cover them up. So this one is Thanksgiving Quaker. Who is that by? Bent Creek? Bent Creek. And so you just cut your foam board or you can have one of the hobby stores cut foam board for you in whatever size you need. So just have it, pin it on, um, you know, and then put your trim around the edges. Um, here's one that they had at holiday, at um, Halloween time. So it came out in orange. And this is a Blackbird design from Winds of Autumn or I think they have two autumn books and it came out of one of those. And then another one I picked up was white and this is one of my designs, Winter A Quiet Serenity. The whites are great because you can do all kinds of things on the whites. But every season they have these same boards like this in different colors and it just says something on the front like um, live love laugh or I don't know I don't remember what it says but it has stuff on the front so it's meant to be just a board that you put up as a display but of course we can use them like this and then the other boards I have to show you are and this is from Homestead Needlework all of these boards and I love her boards so here's one little red alphabet I think it's called by um, Scholar House. This is um, <clears throat> an Annie B's house. Mm, patriotic house, maybe. And then I just put the buttons on the top. This is a Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. So again, you just have your foam board cut, finish it as if you were going to frame it. So when I do my finishing, um, I stretch it and pin it with stainless steel pins. And then when I'm sure that I'm happy with it, I tap them all in with a nail or the hammer. And then I lace the back and then it's ready just to pop on something like this. And then here's another one, something I got at an antique store. <clears throat> And then I just um, specifically designed this. This is a free pattern on our website. Specifically designed this to fit right in this space. Thinking I would keep my favorite red threads in here. And, you know, this is not big enough for all my red threads now. But so, you know, be on the lookout at the antique stores too, because there's some fun things in there that can be turned into a piece to finish on, like some of these guys. All right, <clears throat> I've got three things. I've got 
giveaway from last time, new giveaway for this time, and then a few um, shop things at the end. I only brought a few patterns from Market to show you, um, but I brought some of the other extra little things that I got at Market that I've just now put on the website too, in case you're interested in those. Okay, my three things. First of all, my Tumblr travel mug that I use every day. I know a lot of people use Stanley mugs. My favorite is Hydro Flask, and that's this little guy on it. <clears throat> and I was using this one, which I put a sticker on. It will keep ice in here for two days. I mean, it's incredible. And I like to drink really cold water. I drink more water when uh, it's cold. So I love these. But then I decided I got tired of having to unscrew the top every time I wanted to take a drink. So this I think I'd be more apt to take like on a trip. Whereas this is one that I use and refill every single day. And it's got a really good seal for the straw so you're not losing any. I mean it just stays really well insulated. So Hydro Flask, my very favorite. And I link to these things below too so you can... So, okay, the next thing is also a drinking thing, which I did not plan on having drinking things for you. <clears throat> but growing up, um, when, well, when my kids were young, I used to go over to my grandma and grandpa's house every Tuesday for lunch with the kids. And it was, a, it was just so fun every week to have time with them. And they loved my kids. It was their great grandkids. And so grandma would always get the good glasses out when we came over and the good glasses were these strawberry glasses. Well, I have two of these, I think just two. I don't know, they're on the highest shelf. We don't use them because I'm always so afraid I'm gonna break them. I have looked as many times as I've antiqued in my life, I have looked for more of these in every antique store I've ever looked in and all the glassware I've ever seen, I've never seen this same pattern. But I was shopping this winter at one of my favorite um, stores in Fort Collins, Cozy Cottage is what it's called. And look, not the same, but really pretty strawberry glasses. So I had to buy eight of them because I wanted enough so that if I have, you know, people over for dinner or lunch or whatever, I can use them. So they're by TAG, T-A-G, it's all capital letters. I am linking to their website in the notes below. They're currently sold out, but they sounds like they'll get more in. I'm sure they will. Um, anyway, I was so fun to find strawberry glasses. This will go back into the top, top shelf so that I don't ever break it, but I'm happy to have strawberry glasses to use. All right, and then my third thing is, what I always try and tell you about a new Instagram account that I'm really enjoying, SB Mowing. I don't know if you follow him, Spencer, but Spencer has a mowing service. He always also has a power washing service. And once a week he goes to the most overrun um, yard in his area that he's seen and he cuts it for free. Not only does he cut the, the yard, he does all the edging along the sidewalks and along you know the driveway and you would not believe some of these houses that he comes upon most of them are empty um, but the neighbors have to deal with it so it is just on Instagram it's like a minute and a half or a two minute video and it's you know of course done in double time so you see him zipping around and and he shows before and after pictures and it's just so satisfying to watch him clean up these houses you can go to his website and watch his videos like the hour long version, still advanced speed, but um, not quite as quick as the Instagram. And I haven't wandered over to his SB power washing account because I'm just enjoying so much watch. Who knew watching somebody mow the lawn would be so satisfying, but he just does an incredible job. And uh, anyway, it was fun to watch him. All right, let's talk about giveaways. So last time, we had the Krabby giveaway because people are crabby in February. And the winner is Bridget Gebhardt. 
So Bridget, if you will contact me and my email address is below, I will get this shipped out to you. This was donated to my floss tube giveaway by Deborah at Joyful Stitching Store. I always link to her in my show notes because she's so incredibly generous to donate these project bags and I love her project bags. Okay, the next one, because remember I showed you my Christmas project bag that I use to keep all my Christmas stitching in. If you also stitch for Christmas and you want a fun Christmas bag year round, here it is. We got the flamingo and the Christmas presents and the candy canes. Perfect for stitching Christmas in July or Christmas in April or Christmas whenever. So this is the giveaway also from Deborah this next time and we're going to use the word summer so use the word summer in your comment if you'd like to be entered for a chance to win that all right real quick this is the part where i'm just going to show you a few things for market and a few of the extra little things if you want to pop out and not see all this because you've seen enough fair enough thank you for um, staying and watching me and i hope to see you back in a month but let's look at some of these fun things. So Patriotic Quaker. Now I did not do this one because look, they did it in colors. So I don't have to do this one. Although it's so cute, I will do it. Because of course I need it. I've talked before about not having enough summer finishes to make little summer displays. This is another one from Primrose Cottage. And these are so cool. So a month, a year of monthly minis. A lot of fun things in there. Uh, Teresa Kogut, of course, had some beautiful patterns and her books are always so well done. It's a pretty one. The Serenity one was super popular because those colors just make you feel calm too. It's a perfect uh, title for that piece. And then she has Hello Spring and Hello Spring has eight different spring designs in it. Let's see if there's a metal page. Mm, I can't show you any more pages without showing you charts. But they're all cute. Oh, this is one that I have kitted up with my own because I'm going to stitch this. And this is from the Artsy Housewife Abalonia's Apple Tree. I love that fox. And of course, bright colors, so I love the colors of it too. So I'm going to start that pretty soon. Here is the 2024 Prairie Santa. And you, what I like about it is I like the backstitch trees in the background. I just think that's very a very different look and very unique. But of course you could stitch it without that. And you could take the border from any one of the other prairie schoolers and just put a border, you know, maybe even just put a border here and here if you didn't want to do the back stitching. But I'm going to do the back stitching. In fact, I'm keeping that pattern for myself. Um, all right, let's see. Let me show you patterns before I show you the little stuff. So Scarlet House came out with some really pretty new patterns. This one is Freedom. And then we have a Stitcher's Alphabet, which you know I'm going to have to do that one. And Tending the Flock. So pretty. And Elizabeth's Four Dogs. Queen Elizabeth. This one I thought was cool from Jeanette Douglas. It is a um, spiral bound book of a lot of these different um, floral bouquets that she's done. Now wouldn't that be so, I mean it's beautiful as one piece, but wouldn't it be pretty to do a trio of those in a dough bowl or do one um, pillow and give it as a gift? So it's a book full of really pretty things. This one, oh, shoot, sorry, I shouldn't show you the pattern. This one I'm also going to be stitching because I love this. Greatest of these is Faith by October House and she's coming out with hope and love this year also. 
keeping that one for my own self. Also, I love this one, um, Calling of the Sea. And we don't live, like obviously we're landlocked, we don't live near the sea, but I think the ship and the whale on this are too fun. And I would love to have those for my summer display. Also keeping that for me. Okay, Maggie May. We are waiting on, I don't know if you got my newsletter this week and heard about the Smash to Smithereens box. We shipped eight boxes back from Nashville and the Denver Post Office completely destroyed one full of patterns. A lot of them were Stacy Nash patterns. A lot of them were Teresa Kogut. We've gotten those, a new order from them quickly, so we've gotten those replaced. But one of the ones she did was Maggie May, and it's a sweet little bunny. But she also has um, Miss Hazel, the squirrel, and Bobbin, the mouse. And I'm doing all of those <clears throat> because they're just as cute as can be. I've already done one of her snowmen, and I've done her uh, owl owl head that I love. I love her things like this. All right, and then Mementos of the Heart. I am so excited that she did this because Cecilia at Heart and Hand has a different um, heart kit each year. And of course I missed a ton of them because I wasn't stitching all those years. So I can't wait to stitch some of these, especially that round one. That just looks fun. But I think I'll probably end up doing all of them. Saving that for me. Um, a collection of petite samplers by JBW. I just thought these were so sweet. And, you know, we've talked before about how if you have a big sampler wall, sometimes it's nice to do some smalls to intersperse in there just to give your eye as you're looking around it kind of a rest with some of the smaller ones. We have some really pretty ones from Violets and Verses. Look at the purples in that. So pretty. And I thought this school was really kind of fun. Oh, let's see. That I showed you. So I showed you Abalonia's, but Artsy Housewife also has Gorgeous, which is so cute. Vicious, look at that vicious cat, tore that stem right off of that plant. And you got this, which I can see making for somebody facing a challenge. Uh, Needlework Press and Kirby, I love that yellow house. This one, MH 1860, was not up for pre orders, but it was a new one at market, and I love the colors in that. And then Ellen Carr, also pretty colors. Moments of Glad Grace from Blackbird. They came out with two. The other one was in the Smash to Smithereens box, so we're getting those tomorrow, I think. Probably by the time this is up, we'll have those. And let's see, those I showed you. All right, now let's look at some of the little extras. So Shepherd's Bush always has fun kits in there. Um, booth. So here's a kit for a needle book. Comes with all the things you need. So cute. And this I love. If you don't like backstitching, you're not going to like it, but I do like backstitching and I think those are so pretty, those little pillows, and it comes with all of the things in there. Let's see. And then JBW had this sweet little kit. Comes with everything but the thread because it's so tiny. And you, you know, we all have these extra threads. It comes in that cute little case. This I also need to make. Jeanette Douglas has this little um, stitching spool. And then you can get the spool too. Needlework Press had this fun little um, paper basket, which I just need to put one together, but there's little things to cut out. There's little fun little paraphernalia on the back you can cut out and just tuck all these little things. I think it would be cute in a 
display of some of your stitching things. So I need to make that for myself. And then Little House Needleworks has a log cabin um, patterns that are coming out. Mm, I don't know if it's one a month, but there's nine of them. So we have the pattern, the first pattern and the set of the threads. You only need to add two DMCs to this, but. And then um, these beautiful little waxers from Stacy Nash. I don't use waxers, but I love them because they're so cute. So I just like having them sitting there next to my sewing table. And then we have these two new scissors, this one being mine, but I have more, um, from the Scissorist. So we have this beautiful one, which I showed you. I just, I love how this leather pouch works. It's longer than an embroidery scissor, but you know what it'd be great for is cutting your fabrics and your trims. So that's what I'm going to be using mine for. So that. And then we got some of the Lady Liberty scissors, which come in this really nice leather pouch. But here's what those look like. Lady Liberty. Right, and then the very last thing I want to tell you and I meant to bring a pencil. All right, we got these new Edmar needles. They are my new favorite needles. They remind me of Pat's needles, which were my very favorite needles. Um, they have a gold eye, my gold eye, because I've been using this one so much, is wearing out, you know, the gold's wearing off. But I love how slick they are to use. Somebody today told me they think the point is a little pointier. I haven't noticed that myself, but I'm just telling you that. I've had a hard time getting the top off. It doesn't twist. It's hard to get off. I put that in my newsletter this week and somebody sent me exactly how you do it. So you see the hole here, we've got the hole. So you're gonna turn the hole sideways. Let's see, i put my glasses through. All right, so you, instead of the hole pointing at you, you're turning the hole sideways. And then all you do is push it away from you and it comes right off. I could not believe how easy it was because I can't tell you how many times I tried to twist this off and how many emails I got from people saying, okay, how do you get the top off without damaging the whole tube? So again, you have the hole where you can hang it on a hook. You turn that so the hole's going this way, left to right, and you just push the top away from you and it comes right up. So you might give these a try. We're out of the 26 count right now. We've got 28 and 24, and we'll have more 26 soon. All right, I think that's all for today. It was a little long today just because I had a lot of market things to show and a lot of extra finishing things. But I so appreciate you watching. I look forward to your comments below because I always love talking to you guys down there. And Take care, have a good month, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.